Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps alike, welcome. I am Mullet Mike, bringing you yet another episode of Creepy Gaming. This is the show where we take a look at all kinds of creepy aspects in video game history. For starters, you may notice I am in my new house. Had to get out of that other place, I swear. I know it's going to sound weird, but I think the place was haunted. Bad thing is, is I've done so many creepy gaming episodes now, I don't know what or who it could be. It could be Sonic EXE, it could be Tails Doll, it could be Ben, or even worse, it could be Cliche.exe. That's the worst one. It was just getting weird. Things were moving on their own. Objects were just mysteriously disappearing. Just hearing all these strange sounds. I'm just glad I'm in a new place. Ghost free guarantee. I would like to thank everybody for watching because this is viewer appreciation. That's right, one full year of creepy gaming. Today, we will be covering none other than Minecraft. Rather than giving sticky shout outs for suggestions, this week our sticky shout outs will go to people who submitted footage for this very episode. So, special sticky shout out to all these fine folks. Damn, that's, that's just impressive. Thank you all for submitting your footage. So, without further ado, turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy gaming. Damn right nothing happened. <laughs> Shit! Every so often, a new title comes around and totally revolutionizes the video game industry. None more so than Minecraft. What started as just a little independent game eventually developed a cult following, then hit mainstream audiences, and eventually took its rightful place in pop culture. Even non-gamers are familiar, or at least know, of Minecraft. Created by Marcus Notch Pearson, this sandbox construction game has brought players together for endless hours of entertainment. Minecraft is a perfect example of gameplay over graphics. You don't necessarily have to have awesome next-gen graphics in order to be a fun game. The premise of the game is fairly simple, and really, to me, that is the appeal of the title. Minecraft is whatever you make of it. Coming complete with three single player modes and online multiplayer, this game involves players creating and or destroying various types of blocks in a 3D environment. You can create block structures without limit, giving you the player the ability to form your own personalized artwork. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Minecraft, then you're probably wondering what is it about this innocent looking game that can be so damn creepy? Well, you might be surprised. There are strange mobs, creepy locations, and of course, the notorious Herobrine. Let's start with the mob. If you're not familiar with Minecraft lore and terminology, mobs are living, moving game entities. They could be basic NPCs such as pigs, cows, sheep, and villagers, but there are always two sides to the coin. With passive mobs also comes hostile mobs. These include strange characters such as witches, skeletons, and even zombies. Yes, zombies. There are also neutral mobs. Ugh, I feel like I'm saying mobs a lot. Mob, mob, mobs, mob, mob, mobs. Neutral mobs include Zombie Pig Man, not to be confused with the Man Bear Pig, as well as the infamous Enderman. 
You guessed it, Enderman is Minecraft's take on Slenderman. With its long, slender features as well as the power to teleport, this Enderman can usually be found in the end, which is a creepy enough location in its own right. It can also spawn in the overworld, but that's rare. Known for its creepy demeanor, discovering Enderman late at night can be an eerie experience. Because they are a neutral mob, they will not attack you on sight unless provoked. If you provoke an Enderman, it will stand still staring at you with an evil gaze. With its trembling, gaping mouth, Enderman will emit a long, loud, unsettling scream. It's enough to make you want to piss yourself. Same goes for the creepers. Words can't describe how creepy it is collecting resources at night. The lack of soundtrack. Next thing you know, BAM! Because of their near silent approach, these four legged fuckers can scare you if you're not expecting it. The green suicide bombers also produce a hissing noise when they are about to explode. If you hear the hiss, then it's probably already too late. Now, for what most of you have been waiting for the legend of Herobrine. Now, because this is viewer appreciation, I chose a loyal sticky sub to go over the creepypasta of Herobrine. I selected Doug, aka Fishy. He is a graphics artist, musician, and longtime viewer of Creepy Gaming. All right, Doug, share with us your knowledge of Herobrine. Hello everyone, my name's Doug, and this guy right here is Herobrine. He's the spawn of a creepypasta, but if you don't know what a creepypasta is, then you certainly shouldn't be watching this video. Throughout my part in this video, I'll be analysing Herobrine in two sections, through community, views on him, and the canonical respects on him. But let's get this out of the way first. It's Herobrine, not Herobrine, okay? Sorry. Let's go through the story behind Herobrine itself. I had recently spawned a new world in single player Minecraft. Everything was normal at first. I noticed something move amongst the dense fog. I have a very slow computer, so I have to play with a tiny render distance. I thought it was a cow, so I pursued it, hoping to grab some hides for armor. It wasn't a cow, though. Looking back at me was another character with a default skin, but his eyes were empty. I saw no name pop up, and I double checked to make sure I wasn't in multiplayer mode. He didn't stay long, however. He looked at me and quickly ran into the fog. I pursued out of curiosity, but he was gone. I continued on with the game, not sure what to think. As I expanded to the world, I saw things that seemed out of place for the random map generator to make. 2x2 two two tunnels in the rocks, small perfect pyramids made of sand in the ocean, and groves of trees with all their leaves cut off. I would constantly think I saw this other player in the deep fog, but I never got a better look at him. I tried increasing my render distance to far whenever I thought I saw him, but to no avail. I saved the map and went on the forums to see if anyone else had found this pseudo player. There were none. I created my own topic telling of the man asking if anyone had a similar experience. The post was deleted within 5 minutes. I tried again and the topic was deleted even faster. I received a PM from the username Herobrine containing one word, stop. When I went to look at Herobrine's profile on page 404, I received an email from another user. He claimed that the mods can read the forum user messages so he was safer using email. The emailer claimed that he had seen the mystery player too and had a small directory of other users who had seen him as well. Their worlds were littered with obviously man-made features as well and described their mystery player to have no pupils. About a month passed until I heard from my informant again. Some of the people who had encountered the mystery man had looked into the name Herobrine and found uh, that the name was used frequently by a Swedish gamer. After some further information gathering, it was revealed to be the brother of Notch, the game's developer. I personally emailed Notch and asked him if he had a brother. It took him a while, but he emailed me back with a very short message. The message read, I did, but he is no longer with us. Notch. I haven't seen the mystery man since our first encounter and I haven't noticed any changes to the world other than my own. I was able to press print screen when I first saw him. And um, I'm just going to get Mike to put up a picture of Herobrine right here. Oh, yeah. So, sort of like the first analysis through this is, in the canonical respect, Herobrine is not just dead brother somehow embedded into Minecraft. While this is canon, this is also completely false in reality, as Notch has no brother. Ghost aside, there are two plausible canon theories remaining. Herobrine shows a lot of characteristics of being a form of virus, such as manipulating the worlds, deleting threads, or sending uh, messages through the forum, Minecraft forums. 
perhaps also hacking into Notch's email to reply to his own existence, or Harabarn is simply a far fragment of the user's imagination. All the users the user talked to, including Notch's email reply, could simply be the creation of the player's mind. This would also explain Notch's rejection of the canon, as showing the story all in the user's head. Herobrine is nearly certainly inspired by Slenderman, who is also the inspiration behind Enderman. The most popular theories amongst the community is that Herobrine is a ghost. Other theories could involve him as being a higher being, a demon, or a bad omen, or the suggestions in the canonical explanation. However, most of these are written as if Minecraft itself is reality, rather than the, uh, from the player controlling the avatar with the game. Herobrine canonically has not appeared in real life and remains confined to technology. His appearance isn't that widely spec speculated, the canonical view being a human entity with no pupils or irises, with a standard player skin. The community view being the same, but sometimes with tools. Herobrine has appeared in official uh, Mo Yang images as, as an inside joke kind of thing. His first appearance in official Mo Yang images started with Wedding Weekend, which in which he was just behind Notch's character. His second appearance was in the Minecon header, where yet again Herobrine was just behind Notch. Herobrine has also appeared in the official Minecon trailer created by Hat Films at three, uh, 3 minutes and 11 seconds. However, as users were asked to submit their skins to appear in the trailer, this is not likely intentional. Herobrine was also spotted at the Xbox section of Minecon. He was on the board behind the Xbox stations. During Minecon's closing, a user named Zaraleth won the Herobrine statue by answering the giveaway question for how many Fable games are there correctly. Some users point to this as proof of his future edition, however there is no proof of he is being portrayed by anything other than baiting fans. Herobrine has also appeared on Minecraft's Facebook page, the image being the cover photo. It is notable to state the image was created by a fan for a competition within the humour within the theme Summer Picnic. Hence his inclusion may not be fully intentional. There are many change logs, including the update removed Herobrine. The first time this was included was merely as a joke, but from this has sprouted a strongly backed community behind Herobrine. A lot of people have speculated rumours that the music disc 11 in the game has something to do with Herobrine. C418 was asked about this and he claimed he had nothing to do with this. Since then there have been an absolute shit ton of theories and mystical sightings uh, which have put a lot of users off playing, but a true gamer is never deterred by what the, by whatever the community or creates or makes up. Um, that's sort of my part for the video, so if you want to have a look at my channel, there's a link in the description, but don't, don't be taken straight away because there's nothing serious on there. Um, I really likely, really quickly just like to thank Mike for letting me be on his channel and yeah, just enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you very much. Not a problem, thank you. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge of Herobrine with us. So, what are your thoughts? Is Herobrine real? Or is it just another bullshit creepypasta? As always, be sure to let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Out of all the video game creepypastas I've read, I personally feel like Herobrine could be real. Whether or not it's Notch's dead brother or the game's really haunted, meh, I don't know about all that. But if you are familiar with the game's creator, then you know he has a great sense of humor. I could see this easily being a product of Notch's humor. Either way, Hero Brian has caused buzz amongst the community, giving Minecraft even more recognition. Being a PC game, Minecraft has a ton of mods. There's an adventure map entitled Hero Brian's Mansion, as well as a ton of skins and texture packs. Because of this, we may never know the true story of Hero Brian. So there you have it. What have we learned today? Well, usually these cute little innocent games end up being the most creepy. Whether you agree with it or not, whether you believe in it or not, Herobrine and the rest of the creepy shit in Minecraft will forever go down in creepy gaming history. I would like to thank you all for watching. I would like to thank Doug for his commentary. I would like to thank you all for your support for making this one full year of creepy gaming. Here is to many, many more. I think that's going to do it for me today, guys. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Leave your comments, thoughts, and theories below. 
And be sure to like and favorite for more creepy gaming. Hi, I'm Olive Mike with a and I'll let y'all say it.